Have you ever wondered how AI like ChatGPT actually learns? The secret is in math, but not these scary kinds. If you've ever skipped learning math because it felt too complicated, don't worry, I'm Jean, your engineering mentor, who's going to break it down into just three areas you need to understand based on Stanford's AI program. And trust me, it's way easier than you think. AI is powered by math, but you don't need to be a math genius. Just focus on these three areas, calculus, linear algebra, and probability and statistics. Today, I'll show you exactly what each one means with simple real-world examples, no boring textbooks needed. We're going to start with calculus. Think of it as understanding how things change. That's it. When you're training AI, you want it to get better over time, and calculus help us figure out exactly how to make those improvements. Let's start with derivatives. To make it super simple, imagine a slot machine. When you put in a coin, that's your input. Sometimes you win big, sometimes small, and sometimes you lose. Derivatives help you understand how changing your bet will affect your winning. In AI, it works the same way. Instead of coins, you give the AI information like a photo or some text. Derivatives help the AI understand how small changes in how it processes that information affects its accuracy. Just like you would adjust your betting strategy, the AI adjusts its thinking to get better results. The chain rule is like understanding how changes ripple through a casino. Imagine the casino changes the odds on the slot machine. This doesn't just affect your immediate winnings, it changes how people play, which affects their strategy, which impacts their long-term profits. One simple change can cause a chain reaction. In AI, we use this exact same principle in neural networks. When the AI makes a mistake, we need to figure out how to adjust each layer of the network. The chain rule helps us trace back through all these layers, like following the dominoes backwards to see where we need to make the changes. Think of integrals like adding up all your casino winnings at the end of the day. Instead of counting each spin separately, an integral helps you calculate the total over time. In AI, we use integrals to understand the big picture. For example, when teaching AI to recognize handwriting, we don't just look at how well it recognizes each letter, we look at the total accuracy over many attempts. The fundamental theorem shows us that derivatives and integrals are actually two sides of the same coin. Imagine you're playing blackjack and tracking your winnings over time. Derivatives will tell you how your money is changing at any given moment. Are you winning or losing right now? Integrals add up all those changes to show you your total profit or losses for the night. In AI, fundamental theorems are like bridges. For example, when you're optimizing a model, derivatives help the AI adjust step by step, while integrals smooth out those adjustments to ensure the AI improves over time. Together, they form the foundation for training AI systems. Now, if you want to learn more, one of the best free resources is by Khan Academy, its calculus class, which covers everything we just discussed. If you're more of a book person, check out Calculus for Dummies, and I'll leave the links in the description. Next, let's talk about linear algebra. At its core, AI is pretty much just a bunch of numbers, images, text, audio, they're all represented as numbers in a grid which is called matrices. Now, AI uses matrix transformations to manipulate and process data. For example, when AI recognizes your face in a photo, it processes the pixels as a matrix and transforms them mathematically to identify features. A vector is just a list of numbers. Imagine placing bets on a roulette wheel. You might bet $5 on red, $10 on black, and that's just a vector. In AI, we use vectors for everything. Words can become vectors of related meanings, images become vectors of pixel values, and even your Netflix references can become vectors of ratings. Vectors are like arrows that help both directions and size, and they can be used to represent things like forces and positions. Vector spaces are like containers that hold many vectors 
together and they have special rules that these vectors must follow. Now, if you want to dig deeper into these concepts, check out the free class on linear algebra by Khan Academy or the book Linear Algebra by Bronson. Next is probability and statistics. Self-driving cars don't know exactly what's ahead, but they can estimate the probability of different scenarios, like whether that shadow they see ahead is a pedestrian or just a tree. And that's probability in action. Bayes theorem helps helps AI updates its beliefs as new data comes in. It's why your spam filter gets better over time. It's constantly updating based on the emails you mark as spam or important. Let's say you're playing poker. You know a player has a 60% chance of bluffing based on prior experience. But if they bid big, the chances of them bluffing might increase based on that behavior which is new evidence. Bayes' theorem updates your belief about whether they're bluffing after observing their actions. A Gaussian distribution is a bell-shaped curve that represents how data points are distributed around the mean. Now imagine a casino where the average player loses $100 per night, but some win or lose much more. The bell-shaped Gaussian curve represents the distribution of all players' outcomes with most clustered near the average loss and fewer experiencing extreme gains or losses. In spam detection, Gaussian distribution can help determine whether an email's characteristics are typical of spam or not. Khan Academy also has great resources on probability and statistics, so go check that out. And now you understand the math behind AI, you're ready to move on to the next part of the roadmap, which is learning to code. Now click here to watch that.